Hi everyone, I realised I promised you a video a bit sooner than this, but uh, unfortunately a lot of things have been going on in my life, uh, not all of which are good. Uh, we had a death in the family, uh, it's made redundant in my relationship, and just generally I've been a bit exhausted. Um, but I am now in the final stages of producing a video on study skills, which should hopefully be out next week. Before I say anything else, if you're a person watching this who has just got their results and they weren't good enough to get into university, there is a really important video that you need to watch by a YouTuber called Lex, and I'll put a link to that here. It's a really, really good video that you really need to watch. This video is about what I've been doing this summer, most of which involves staying in Oxford. I managed to cram in a lot extra as well. Uh, I managed to see the Olympic torch pass through Oxford Gross Calorie by Roger Bannister. That's this guy who ran the first sub four minute mile. I went mountain climbing in Snowdonia with my friends. Been exploring the local countryside around Oxford. And just this past week, I've actually been visiting a friend in Amsterdam. And most excitingly for me, one thing that happened at the very start of the summer was that the YouTube channel which I produced for my college, SPC Oxford, link here, won an award from the university for student podcasting, uh, which was incredible, actually. <laughs> Uh, which is why you're actually seeing me in slightly higher definition than you're used to. Most of what I've been doing this summer though is what a lot of people who are doing the four-year physics course here do in the summer of their third year, which is to do a summer research project in the physics department here in Oxford. So there are seven broad sub-departments to the physics department in Oxford. You've got astrophysics, atmospheric, oceanic and planetary physics, biological physics, condensed matter physics, particle physics, quantum information processing and theoretical physics. I've been working in atmospheric physics, specifically looking at stratospheric dynamics with my supervisor, Dr. Scott Osprey. Now, the stratosphere is the middle atmosphere. It's between 10 and 50 kilometers up. It doesn't have as much exciting dynamic behavior as the lower atmosphere does, like the hurricanes and skydivers. In fact, its name comes from the Latin stratum, meaning lots of layers stacked on top of one another, kind of boringly. But it's not just a block of air that hangs above the Earth. There's actually an awful lot that goes on in the stratosphere that we still don't understand. What I've been working on specifically is two different oscillations of wind velocity in the part of the stratosphere that's above the equator. The wind in this part of the stratosphere changes from westerly to easterly back to westerly every two years or so. It's called the quasi-binaural oscillation. It's quasi-binaural because it doesn't happen exactly every two years. It happens sometimes every 24 months, sometimes every 30 months, and sometimes every 36 months. But it never has a period which isn't one of those three numbers, 24 months, 30 months, or 36 months. Interestingly, there's an oscillation even higher up in the atmosphere, which has a period of exactly six months. And you might have noticed that those three numbers, 24, 30, 36, are all multiples of six. So it's reasonable to assume that there might be some kind of interaction going on there between the quasi-binaural oscillation and the semi-annual oscillation. Remember, when we were talking about oscillations here, we're talking about the velocity of the wind. So in other words, whether wind on the whole is going to the west or to the east over the equator. So it seems that these two oscillations might be connected somehow. And that's exactly what two papers, one from Caltech and one from Oxford, showed rigorously. Specifically, the Oxford paper showed that the two oscillations are always phase synchronized or phase locked. Basically, what I've been doing is knowing that this phase synchronization happens in the actual atmosphere, has been looking for computer models of the atmosphere which also have phase synchronization of these two oscillations. The idea being that if we can find a group of computer models which have this phase synchronization and another group of models which don't have this phase synchronization, that the differences between those two groups of models might give us some kind of clue as to how those two oscillations are physically linked in the atmosphere. To cut a long story short, of all the models that I looked at, and I looked at over 20 international models of the atmosphere, only three actually had any kind of quasi-binaural oscillation, and of those three, only one had the type of phase synchronization that we were looking for. So we still have a long way to go when it comes to modelling the stratosphere, but we do at least have one model which does it right in this particular instance. What happens now is that I have written a paper, and the co-authors of the paper, including my supervisor, have looked at it, and it's currently being reviewed, and with any luck it will be published in Geophysical Review Letters, and I will officially be a scientific author, which is like a childhood dream. I'm 
can actually call myself a scientist, which is mental. What's even more mental is that now my supervisor wants me to accompany him to a conference in Germany to present our work, which includes giving a 20 minute talk on the paper, which I must be honest, I'm mildly terrified about, but it represents something really exciting for me, which is a potential start in academia, and that's what I think I'd like to do. I think I'd like to become a lecturer and be able to teach and do academic research at the same time. So this is really quite exciting for me. So yeah, that's uh, what I've been up to and why I haven't been making more videos. Though that is set to change soon, I promise. In the meantime, as ever, if you have a question about anything that I've talked about, please feel free to leave a comment on this video uh, or to send me a message. I'll try and get back to you. And you'll be hearing more from me soon.